Hi there. Welcome to this lesson I've entitled, How to Have a Successful Experience with Microsoft Online Testing. My name's Tim Warner. I'm happy to be your instructor. My purpose in creating this lesson is to answer any questions you might have regarding taking Microsoft certification exams in an online delivery format. Let's get right to work. First, why Microsoft Online Testing? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward, at least as of this recording in the end of June 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic means that Pearson View physical testing centers are unavailable. Recall that Pearson View is the company that Microsoft partners with to actually deliver their certification exams. I have found in my experience, I've been taking Microsoft exams for over 20 years now, that the Pearson OnView client that is the way, the specific tool that Pearson uses to deliver Microsoft exams remotely, I found that that client has come a long way over the last several years and it's so stable and so resilient for me that I will only use online testing from now on with Microsoft exams. My goal is never again to darken the doors of a physical testing center unless I have no other option. Now we're gonna go through the specific system requirements that the Pearson OnView client has, and then I'm gonna jump into a demo and walk you through how to do a system check. This is critically important, pay close attention. Almost without fail, all of the people that I've spoken to who have had problems taking exams remotely with Pearson OnView had problems that were in all likelihood solvable had they gone through the system check and done their due diligence. Now, if you do due diligence, say that three times quickly, and your exam session crashes and you're not able to get back into it, take heart. I'm going to give you at the end of this lesson specific places to go to file a grievance with Pearson View and or Microsoft. Now, OnView is the name of the client application that actually runs the Microsoft certification exam. You'll need to be on a Windows 10 or Windows 8.1 system. There's also a Mac OS version. You have to be running High Sierra, which is Mac OS 10.13 or higher. Note that previous versions of Mac OS, previous versions of Windows, and Linux, any distribution, are prohibited. You have to be on a full computer and not a tablet also. The system has to have at least four gigabytes of RAM. Your screen resolution has to be at least 1024 by 768, 16-bit color depth resolution. That shouldn't be too big of a bar to cross. Pearson OnView recommends that you have 1080p, which is 1980 by 1080 with 32-bit color. As I said, you have to be on a full-fledged laptop or desktop computer. Touch screens, tablets are prohibited. What else? Well, as far as your network connection, Pearson OnView in their literature strongly suggests you use a wired Ethernet connection, although I've used wireless plenty of times and had no problems. You do have to have at least 3 megabits per second download and upload speed, and that has to be consistently available bandwidth. Pearson OnView prohibits mobile hotspot tethering, so please don't try to bypass this requirement. The OnView client is a pretty smart application. It will detect that and not let you take your exam. Browsers are pretty friendly here. Internet Explorer 11, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Pearson OnView says latest versions. The browser is just the initial starting point. You're going to see in the upcoming demo that you switch over and you actually do your exam pre-check and your actual exam session within the OnView client. And OnView will actually force close your browser if you don't already have it stopped. Going further, your computer should have an integrated webcam that supports a resolution of 640 by 480, 10 frames per second. Ideally, I recommend that you take your exams on a laptop computer that has an integrated webcam and microphone. You can use an external webcam, that's fine, and in some cases that might be more convenient if, for example, the proctor wants you to physically swivel the camera so he or she can inspect your exam environment. But notice that the resolution requirement's pretty low, and that's good news. You do need to have an integrated microphone, either coming through your webcam or through your computer. This is another reason why testing on a laptop computer is preferred, at least in my experience. It's important for you to note that headset microphones are not allowed, so be very careful to make sure you follow these requirements. 
Pearson on View disclaims any problems you might have with corporate virtual private networks, firewalls, and proxy servers. Instead, they recommend that you take the exam in a private network environment. Pearson on View does publish a list of all of the protocols and ports and IP addresses that they need, and you can work with your networking team if you do want to take or if you need to take the Microsoft certification exam in your corporate network environment. Now, what should you have with you physically on exam day when you're ready to take your Microsoft certification exam? Well, you should have your computer all set up and ready to go. The only foreground application will be your browser, so you can sign in with your Microsoft account and actually start the check-in procedure. I want to double underline that. It's important that you kill all tasks that are running except for your browser. This might mean that you have to use, say, Task Manager in Windows or Activity Monitor in Mac OS to go down into the background processes. I found once on Windows and once on Mac OS, the OnView client stopped me and said, hey, you have to stop this particular process. And in one case, it was an anti-malware scanner. And in another case, it was one of those keystroke automation utilities. So know that OnView has a huge library that it refers to internally on processes that it considers to be either suspicious or potentially something that can violate exam security. So please don't try to cheat. A downside to cheating and being detected is that Microsoft is very likely to permanently bar you from any future certification. So I really can't stress that enough. If you're on a desk with multiple monitors, you can have only one monitor active for your test session. So additional monitors need to be turned off at the least. And what I normally do is swivel them around 180 degrees in the other direction. And I have pretty good luck with that. If you're using a laptop, feasibly you can set up the laptop in a closet or in a small distraction-free room. Your environment has to be a walled room and the door has to be closed. While it doesn't have to be literally bare, at the very least you want to make sure that your desk just contains your computer. If it's a laptop, if it's a desktop computer, it's okay to have your keyboard and mouse. But anything else, I wouldn't do anything with beverages. Get everything else off the desk and look around the room and look for anything that could potentially cause a problem. That is, if you have a bunch of computer textbooks over there on the shelf, you might want to cover them up or move them away. You will need a mobile phone with you. You'll also need identification. And I'll give you a link at the end of this tutorial where you can verify, depending on where you are in the world, there's a whole bunch of different valid forms of ID. Note that you need only one valid form of ID here. When you're taking an exam in a Pearson View Physical Testing Center, they normally require two. During the exam, it's critical that you keep your face in the webcam frame. If you get up to stretch, the proctor is likely going to revoke your exam. You can't leave the room either. Keep your hands away from your mouth. Again, all of these precautions and rules aren't to make you have a tougher time with the exam. They're to preserve the integrity of the exam and to keep exam security foremost in mind. It's a good thing. By keeping your hands away from your mouth, you're making it known that you're not whispering something or potentially communicating with someone else. Speaking of that, make sure that you communicate with those who are in your office or home to ensure you aren't interrupted. If you're interrupted, if someone walks into the room, the proctor will invalidate your test and you don't want that. Again, this needs to be a walled room with the door closed. Lastly, no bio breaks are allowed. That's another reason why I advise against keeping a beverage with you on your desk. You're going to need to, when you finish using your phone for the check-in, you're going to need to put the phone out of arm's reach. There are some beverage options. I think you have to use a clear glass, but I wouldn't even do that, especially given that there's no bio breaks. You'll want to just go for endurance here. Now I'm going to take you out into a demo so I can show you how all this works. Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to walk you through how to do the system check with Pearson OnView. At least I'm going to do some of it live, and then I've taken screenshots for the rest of the procedure, so you'll be able to see it from end to end. But I'm going to have to switch between my web browser and my slide deck. Shouldn't be a big deal. First thing you'll want to do, of course, is register to take the exam. Now, I have to go to an exam that I haven't yet taken. That's why we're looking at this DP200. And if we scroll down to Schedule Exam, we've got the big old Schedule Exam button. Let's click that. We'll be asked to verify our details. And then on the next screen, we're asked, what is our exam discount eligibility? 
We're going to assume that we're not Microsoft employees, nor do we have a voucher from a Microsoft event. We're going to continue scheduling the exam with Pearson View, which is the third and bottom button. You should have mentioned this earlier. I'm assuming that you're signed in with your Microsoft account. If you're not, you'll be required to do so. We've now shifted over to wsr.pearsonview.com. So we're out of Microsoft, and now we're at Pearson View's Microsoft registration area. First important question is, how do you want to take your exam? We're going to choose at my home or office. And notice that there's a button here to run the pre-check. You don't have to do the pre-check during registration. In fact, I would suggest that you not do it so you can maintain your focus through the registration period. I'll show you how we can run the pre-check afterward. Let's go to the next button. Of course, we have to agree to all the policies. I've read these, which is why I'm quickly going to select all of them. I would suggest you definitely read through them before you agree. Depending on the Microsoft exam, you'll have a various number of localized languages. I'm going to choose my language and then go next. We see price details, just verification. There's a nice link here to online proctoring required information. I'm going to right click that link and put it into another tab because that's actually an important docs article there. Let's click next. Remember, we're going to be dealing with a live or you're going to be dealing with a live proctor. That proctor will most likely just be on audio, but he or she may show up physically using their webcam and they'll come online to welcome you. And they'll also come online and may ask you to do further verification of your room. One experience I had recently, the proctor did want me to literally take my laptop and swivel it 360 degrees. I had the integrated webcam in order to scan the full surface of my room for verification purposes. I'm going to choose the language for my proctor and go next. What's cool about scheduling your appointment when you're doing online testing is that you get generally get so much more flexibility than being subject to the, the operating hours of a physical Pearson View testing center. However, I think Microsoft is seeing a lot of activity because as you can see here, I'm recording this on June 22nd and I can schedule as early as tomorrow, or I could do Wednesday or Thursday, but then the rest of this month is off. Let me jump ahead to July. Looks like there's a lot of July, and it used to be, just as recently as a few weeks ago, I was able to take exams on the weekend, but it looks like Pearson View has backed off on that a little bit. Okay, so we can choose our date, and then we choose a time slot. And again, I've noticed that depending on the day, you're going to get more or less of these morning and afternoon time slots. Sometimes I see them go as early in the morning as 1 a.m. It looks like on this particular date, July 6th, in my time zone, which is central, I can start at 7.15, and the last appointment is all the way at 11.15 p.m. That's pretty awesome from my perspective. You can truly take the exam when you feel you'll be most inspired. So the rest of this is pretty much e-commerce stuff. You're going to need to go through the e-commerce engine if you qualify for a discount, which I do as a Microsoft certified trainer. You just proceed to the checkout and go on. I'm going to dump out of there now because I think I've covered everything that was unique to online testing. In terms of taking the system check, this is a page that we were referenced a moment ago, but what I would suggest you do, what I actually do, is I'll do a Google search for Microsoft Online Testing, because I don't have the web address memorized, and if you go to the Microsoft Online Exams page, this has a button for system test right here. Another tip, you can do a Google search for Pearson View Microsoft, and if you go to the Microsoft OnView exam information page, it's at home pearsonview.com. This is really a very important page to bookmark. In fact, I'm going to bookmark it right here because when it comes to your exam day, you can use this page to actually begin your exam. As you see here, this page also has a link to run the system test and there's also a login option. And once you log in with your Microsoft account, you can then start your live exam experience. Now, here's something else for you to know. The system test is exactly the same that you do now or before your your exam day. It's the same test that you'll do right before you take the exam on exam day. So I've been stressing and double stressing and triple stressing certain things. My biggest thing I want to stress is that you take the time to test your system. Do it in the room where you plan to take the test and on the system you plan to use as well. So let's go to test my system and notice that we get an access code. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and then I'm going to download the Pearson OnView client. 
Again, this is available for Windows and Mac. It works exactly the same. I've used it on both operating system platforms. And when you start the OnView client in Windows, it'll take over the screen. Now at this point, we can leave the browser running, but momentarily we're gonna be asked to close the browser. And as I said earlier, you wanna make sure that any other applications, like I have PowerPoint running, you wanna quit out of all of those. And if you're on Windows, you might wanna right click your taskbar and go to Task Manager and go to More Details so you can see all your processes and close out of absolutely everything you can get away with because the only application that needs control and should be running in the foreground of your system is this OnView client application. So what you're seeing here is that we don't even need to paste it in. It looks like OnView automatically plugged in my access code. We put in our mobile phone number, and then the rest of the process is going to be a hybrid of working on our mobile phone and this OnView application. For the rest of this demo, I'm going to come back to the slides to make it easier to show you. So here's the screen that we just saw a moment ago. You put in your phone number, and within a second, you're going to see the Pearson OnView client show this screen that shows a high-level view of the check-in process. There's going to be a system check that looks at your internet speed and your webcam and your microphone. You're going to need to take some pictures of yourself, your ID, and the workspace, and then Pearson OnView will auto-close any other applications that you don't close yourself, and then you're ready to rock. You specify your age, as you can see, and then you see on your mobile phone, you'll get an SMS text message that gives you a link to click to enter your information. So click on the link, you click the link, and your default browser on your mobile phone starts, and you're instructed to walk through this process. You'll need to give the application access to your camera, of course. You'll take a selfie, and you'll upload it to Pearson on View. Next, you'll take pictures of your identification. You choose your issuing country, and there's a whole bunch of identification types. You'll take a picture of the front and the back. And as you can see on the left here, those are placeholders. I'm currently uploading my front picture when I took that screenshot. Then on the right-hand side, it says prepare your workspace before continuing. Let's see if there's anything on that bullet list that I haven't actually mentioned. Oh, the second point says note-taking boards. If you've taken Microsoft exams in the past, you might be familiar with dry erase markers and boards. The Microsoft Online Learning, they have a screen-based whiteboard. So while you're taking your test, you can click a button and then use your keyboard and your mouse to work with that whiteboard. So it's digital. You can't use any physical note-taking equipment on these Microsoft exams. Here we see on the left me taking pictures of my environment. So again, you take a selfie, you take front and back pictures of your ID, then you're prompted to take four pictures of your room, one facing your testing computer, one facing the back of your room, one to the left and one to the right. It takes just a moment to upload those. And once the photo uploading is complete, as you see on the right-hand screenshot, it says return to your computer and click the refresh button. And no mobile phones are allowed within arm's reach, so you want to put your mobile phone out of reach at this point. One thing I didn't show is this. The other half of this validation takes place on your computer where it does a system check. And what you'll want to do here is get three green checks, as you can see in the screenshot. Just speak audibly and say things like testing, one, two, three. They just need to get a signal from your microphone. The internet speed, I already told you that, at least three megabits per second down and up. And then in your webcam, it needs to be working and you need to be in frame. Okay, once you've done all that, you're really just about ready to take the exam. Or if you're doing the system check, you're almost ready to just close the OnView application and go about your merry way. You'll be prompted at this point to close any other application. So your web browser, you want to make sure to close that. This application will force close any applications that it feels should be stopped. And if it's unable to stop a process, it won't let you into the exam until you've done so. Now, I've experienced the OnView client to be very resilient. I've heard reports from learners who, for whatever reason, had their exam session crash to the point where they had to restart their computer. And what they did is simply redo the check-in to the exam, and you have to go through the system check again, unfortunately. And when they reach their proctor, they say, hey, I was actually in the middle of an exam session, and I crashed. And the proctor will be able to plug you back into your exam session where you can resume it, which is pretty darn awesome. And I'd like to give major props and kudos to Pearson View for that engineering.
This is a little bit blurry, but it gives you the idea. This is the last screen you see before you actually take the exam. And at this point, it says you must now obey all exam rules. You have to stay in the webcam frame, and it says recording. They are actually, when I say they, Pearson View are actually recording that webcam stream on your side. And so at this point, you just sit and wait. Hopefully, it won't take a long time for the proctor to come online. But you'll want to make sure by the time you get to this page, if you're actually on exam day, you're ready to complete your test. For learning resources, number one, the Pearson OnView Policies and Requirements is a must bookmark site. I've created short URLs for you. Go to timw.info forward slash MOT1. If you have an issue with the exam delivery, you have to ask yourself, is this problem with the exam engine or the exam content? If it's with the exam engine, you'll want to file a grievance with Pearson View. Go to timw.info forward slash MOT2 to do so. If by contrast, your exam grievance has to do with the content of the exam itself, that's a Microsoft worldwide learning issue. Go to timw.info forward slash MOT3 for contact details. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that it's helped give you a lot of confidence and pointers. I myself am an enthusiastic proponent of Microsoft online testing. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I plan to do online testing exclusively from now on. If you want to check out some of my other work, I have an AZ900 Azure Fundamental Study Guide in my YouTube channel. TimW.info forward slash AZ900SG takes you to the table of contents. On Twitter, I'm Tech Trainer Tim. My long form courses, almost all on Microsoft Azure, are in the Pluralsight library. My author page is timw.info forward slash ps. Lastly, you can reach me at my website, techtrainertim.com. Thanks again, happy studying, and all the best to you when you sit for your next Microsoft exam.